This video supported in part by Boy, what a difference a couple of years can make. Back in 2019, I purchased what was at the time the first ever Partycade manufactured by Arcade 1UP. It was the three games in one, Galaxian, Galaga, and Pac-Man. And that one turned out to be so subpar that it turned into an entire series of videos that I did here on Gen X Grown Up. It just left such a bad taste in my mouth that I'd pretty much sworn off those Partycades. In fact, the only Arcade 1UP branded product I've purchased since that original Partycade was last year's tabletop Pong unit. And I was so impressed with both the hardware and software and how it had evolved since my first experience that when I saw Arcade 1UP was releasing a 40th anniversary Defender Partycade, I decided I really, really had to own it. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Now certainly you can perfectly well run Defender on your own via emulation without buying anything, but it's the control layout for Defender. It's that vertical joystick, it's all those different buttons arranged in such a way that you just can't duplicate without purpose-built hardware. And if you do map the controls to something else, when you encounter a Defender in the wild, those skills that you've developed in emulation will not carry over because you just don't have the muscle memory for where reverse is or where hyperspace is or where smart bombs are. You really need a dedicated unit. And that was the biggest thing that drew me to this Defender Party Cade. It comes, as with all the Party Cades, almost entirely pre-assembled in a box with a few accessories. There are brackets for hanging it on a door, there are those for mounting it on a wall, or these nice T-molded edged legs that you could put on the side of your Party Cade to allow you to just stand it on the table. Also, lots of instructions. Oh man, lots, tons of instructions to throw away. All right, this is a lot of fun. As I said, I chose to stand my party cade up on the table. And so it was just a matter of taking those nice legs, unscrewing the bottom two screws from each side, putting the leg in place and putting the screws right back in. Once up and powered on, it's time to take a tour of this unit. First and foremost, you will notice that beautiful backlit marquee and not washed out like I'd heard some of the backlit arcade one-up marquees are. There's that big 17 inch LCD display right in the middle. Volume control is no longer off, too quiet or too loud. You actually have a granular volume control with a toggle switch that lets you bring it up and down like you would any other TV or electronics device. The control deck is manufactured with standard quality arcade one-up buttons and joysticks. Not exactly arcade quality, but good quality and they feel good in the hand and they control well. And over on the far side of that control deck, two more cool features, both a headphone jack so you can play and listen privately without disturbing anyone, and a USB port where you can plug in a second controller. So even though the control deck is designed for one player at a time, for those multiplayer games included here, you do have a second controller so you and a friend can play these games simultaneously. What a great addition. Okay, let's run through the games included. Once you select the game you'd like to play, before you get started, you have a couple of options. You can push the fire button, which actually jumps you into a controller test screen. It shows a visual representation of the control deck to make sure that everything is working. The other thing you can do is go into settings for each game by tapping the reverse button. The settings vary from game to game, but in general they include things like difficulty, whether or not we're going to render scan lines to represent an old CRT or not. With that taken care of, it's time to jump into the games included here. Now obviously Defender is the biggie. I'm going to save that one for last. So let's start instead with Gauntlet. Gauntlet is that Dungeons and Dragons-y sort of adventure game where you can be an elf or a warrior, you pick up food and you fight monsters, working your way through a maze, picking up keys and potions. You know the game. So again, it's a single player or two player if you plug in that secondary controller in this case, so no four player Gauntlet. Gauntlet is nice to have in this collection, especially if you never got very far in Gauntlet because you can just keep pumping in more tokens and continue to give yourself health. You can play through the entire game without even worrying about whether or not you're getting hit. Next up is Clax. Now this was a puzzle game that I've never seen in any other device like this, and I love seeing it included here. I always considered Clax to be an interesting mashup of Tetris and Connect 4 with a very 80s kind of neon aesthetic vibe. Nice addition to have here. Up next is Root Beer Tapper. Not Tapper, not Budweiser Tapper, but the Root Beer variety. It's the same as any Tapper you play, just the one that was branded friendly for kids because it doesn't have beer in it. This next game is one that seems like kind of an oddball in this collection, 
question, at least it is to me, this is Bubbles. Now, Bubbles is a game that I saw in arcades, but never spent much time with, and as such, I don't know the rules very well, nor am I very good at it. But it's a joystick-only game, and I should mention that even though this Defender Control deck uses an up-and-down joystick, it looks like an up-and-down joystick. It's fully functional as a standard eight-way joystick, so don't think you're only gonna have two directions on the joystick. And this is well illustrated in Bubbles, where I'm only using the joystick to navigate all over the screen in all eight directions. The next game is a Williams classic that needs no introduction. Medieval Warfare on birds? Yeah, we're talking about Joust. Perfectly emulated here. It controls great. It plays great. We all know Joust incredibly well. Now, of course, this really excels as a two-player game, so really handy to have that USB port on the control deck. If you do have a second player, you're not going to be left alone. Again, a great inclusion, Arcade 1-Up. Nice job. Up next, Rampage. I get to be a lycanthropic gorilla or lizard or whatever I want to be to smash buildings throughout cities in the United States, getting bullets and dynamite thrown at me and smashing tanks and helicopters. Yeah, of course, Rampage. Great addition here. And another one that benefits from having that two-player option with the USB. Up next, Wizard of War, one of the great speech synthesis games that I remember everybody in the arcade had cranked up to 11 because it was screaming at you from across the room to come and play Wizard of War. It's a simple maze game where you're just looking for monsters to shoot in a maze. It's competitive or cooperative, depending on how you choose to play with a friend. And periodically, monsters are hidden. You can only see them on that overworld map until you have direct line of sight. Up next, four games in one, it's Gorf. Oh man, Gorf was a great game in the arcade. I always felt I was getting more than my money's worth of my quarter because you can play kind of a Space Invaders game, and kind of a Galaga game, and kind of Laser Zap game, and then kind of a Phoenix -a game. You have those different levels that you could play through each time they got more difficult. You could even see your rank increase by the incandescent bulb that illuminated behind that bezel, and that's emulated here on this unit too. Up next, another great speech synthesis, this time in outer space shooting, it's Sinistar. I hunger! This was a great one where we had to shoot all the little rocks, collect the little nuggets that gave you Cinnabombs, while the Sinistar monster was assembling himself, and eventually he'd be assembled and call me a coward, and he would show up and kill me if I didn't have enough bombs ready, which I almost never did. But now that I have Sinistar in a dedicated unit, sitting here ready to go all the time, maybe I'll practice and finally get better at it. Okay, we've gone through the other nine. Time for number 10, really number one in my heart. Defender, the Williams classic. This game has a reputation for being one of the most difficult arcade games ever released. It's not uncommon for new players to play fewer than 30 seconds on a quarter. And no matter how much I practiced, it seemed that I never went more than two or three levels and maybe 10 or 15 grand was my best high score. Let's take a look at how Defender is handled on this new 40th anniversary party game. And spoiler alert, it's pretty damn good. Now, like the other games, you can start with the options menu where you can set multiple things like the starting difficulty, the max difficulty, scan lines. A very intriguing option here is the ability for simplified controls. Now, if you're trying to get good at Defender to play in the arcade, don't use these. But what it effectively does is it controls more like Defender did in consoles. The Atari 2600 did this. Rather than up, down, a thrust button and a reverse button, you can just move the stick in the direction that you want to move and you can control the ship in that way. Now, I'm not using that, but you certainly could if you're frustrated by the controls in Defender, because I want to get good at the right way to play it, so when I see it in the arcade, I'm not such a scrub. Okay, let's get the game going. Looks, sounds, fantastic. Let's just take a second to appreciate the glory that is this Williams arcade classic. And for my money, just as important as the game itself is the control deck. Look at the real control deck here compared to the one provided on this party cake. Some very minor creative license has been taken, but by and large, every button is exactly where it should be. As I play this on the party cade, I'm confident that I'm learning Defender muscle memory that's gonna serve me appropriately when I encounter a real arcade cabinet in the wild. If you like Defender like I like Defender, and you suck at Defender like I suck at Defender, this is, for my money, the best way to play Defender outside of a genuine arcade cabinet that has been released ever in any form factor at all. What's good about this unit? Well, a lot is good about it. First, we had that really nice backlit marquee that's not washed out, 
nice and vibrant. We have the option for a second player with that USB port right on the control deck and right next to it, that headphone jack, so I can play in silence without disturbing anyone. And then we have that big, vibrant 17-inch LCD display. Okay, let's move on to the cons. Actually, one of the cons is that LCD display. For my money, the bezel should have been more bottom loaded because the screen felt a little low to me. When the controls are the right height for my hands, I felt I was looking down at the screen at all times. They could easily have brought that up two or three inches and put their logo lower on the unit because I felt myself craning my neck a little when in reality, it could be just a bit higher. The other thing that I had a problem with, I kind of have fixed on my own, but it's worth noting, and that's that ball top joystick. I had that thing fall off in my hands at least three times because the stick is free spinning as well as the ball is free spinning. And when you're furiously playing Defender, it will just pop off after the threads work their way loose. How did I fix it? I just took the ball top off, put a little bit of Elmer's Craft glue in there and screwed it back down. It's not permanent, but it's holding it in place well enough that it's not falling off on me anymore. So if you buy a Defender Party Cade, maybe also invest in a little bit of Elmer's glue as well. So ultimately, what is my review for this Arcade 1UP 40th Anniversary Defender Party Cade? Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm pretty fond of this unit. I'm really happy to have picked it up. And in fact, I'm going to rate it four and a quarter tokens out of five. With an MSRP of $299, I picked mine up on sale for just $219, a great deal if you can find it. And if you're gonna play Defender, if you wanna play it the right way, this is the unit that you should pick up to play, practice, and enjoy this Williams arcade classic. And if you'd like to see where this entire adventure began for me, check out this playlist that has the entire saga of that original Pac-Man Partycade. It started off bad, it got worse, it got better, I made mistakes, there's a lot to see in it. Check that out if you have a chance. Hey, I really hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.